The Martin 262 Convoy Fighter was a prototype jet aircraft developed by the Glenn L. Martin Company in the early 1950s. Intended as a long-range escort fighter for convoys, the Martin 262 was designed to protect them from enemy aircraft and missiles. Welcome back to Future City. Today we are going to talk all about Martin 262 Convoy Fighter. Let's get right to it. The Martin 262 Convoy Fighter was intended as a long-range escort fighter for convoys. The Martin 262 was designed to protect them from enemy aircraft and missiles. With its advanced radar and fire control systems, and a variety of weapons, including machine guns and air-to-air -air missiles, the Martin 262 was a formidable aircraft that demonstrated the capabilities of jet technology at the time. Despite its short development period, the Martin 262 made a significant impact on the development of military aircraft and serves as a testament to the innovation and determination of the engineers and pilots who worked on the program. The Martin 262 was powered by two General Electric J47GE 17 turbojet engines, which provided it with a top speed of over 600 miles per hour. It had a range of over 2,000 miles, making it capable of escorting convoys across long distances. The Martin 262 was equipped with a variety of weapons, including six 0.50 caliber machine guns and a variety of air-to-air -air missiles. It also had a radar system that allowed it to detect enemy aircraft at long ranges and a fire control system that allowed it to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. The Martin 262 made its first flight in 1952 and was initially slated to enter service with the U.S. Air Force in the mid-1950s. However, the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles and the increasing effectiveness of air-to-air -air missiles led the Air Force to cancel the program in 1955. Despite its short development period, the Martin 262 made a significant impact on the development of military aircraft. Its advanced radar and fire control systems were ahead of their time, and many of the technologies developed for the Martin 262 were later incorporated into other aircraft. In addition to its military applications, the Martin 262 also had the potential to be used as a commercial aircraft. Its long range and high speed made it a potential competitor to other long range jets of the time, such as the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC 8. Unfortunately, the Martin 262 never made it into production, and only a handful of prototypes were built. Today, the Martin 262 is remembered as a pioneering aircraft that pushed the boundaries of what was possible in aviation technology. Despite its failure to enter service, the Martin 262 remains an important part of aviation history and serves as a testament to the innovation and determination of the engineers and pilots who worked on the program. In addition to its military applications, the Martin 262 also had the potential to be used as a commercial aircraft. Its long range and high speed made it a potential competitor to other long range jets of the time, such as the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC 8. Unfortunately, the Martin 262 never made it into production, and only a handful of prototypes were built. Today, the Martin 262 is remembered as a pioneering aircraft that pushed the boundaries of what was possible in aviation technology. Despite its failure to enter service, the Martin 262 remains an important part of aviation history and serves as a testament to the innovation and determination of the engineers and pilots who worked on the program. Today, the Martin 262 is remembered as a fascinating piece of aviation history and a testament to the innovation and determination of the engineers and pilots who worked on the program. While it may not have entered production, it remains an important part of the story of military aviation and the evolution of aircraft technology. The Martin 262 Convoy Fighter was designed to be able to operate from a variety of airfields, including both paved and unpaved runways. It had a tricycle landing gear configuration with a single nose wheel and a pair of main wheels located under the wings. This jet's landing gear was designed to be sturdy and able to withstand the stresses of high-speed landings and takeoffs. It was equipped with hydraulic shock absorbers to smooth out the landing 
and protect the aircraft and its crew from the jarring forces of a rough landing. Its landing characteristics were generally considered to be good, thanks in part to its advanced fly-by-wire flight control system. This system used a combination of mechanical and electrical controls to provide the pilot with precise control of the aircraft's movements. Despite its advanced design, the Martin 262 did have some challenges when it came to landing. One of the main issues was its high approach speed, which could make it difficult for pilots to judge their distance from the ground and potentially lead to hard landings. In addition, the Martin 262's tricycle landing gear configuration could make it prone to nose-over accidents if the pilot did not properly judge their landing flare. To mitigate this risk, the Martin 262 was equipped with a warning system that would alert the pilot if they were approaching the ground too quickly. Overall, the Martin 262 was considered to be a reliable and capable aircraft when it came to landing. Its advanced design and technology made it one of the most advanced aircraft of its time, and it set the stage for many of the aircraft that came after it. There are a few things that many people might not know about the Martin 262 convoy fighter jet. It was designed to be a long-range escort fighter. The Martin 262 was intended to be a long-range escort fighter for convoys, which were groups of ships traveling together for mutual protection. The Martin 262 was designed to protect the convoys from enemy aircraft and missiles and had a range of over 2,000 miles. It had a radar system that could detect enemy aircraft at long ranges. The Martin 262 was equipped with a radar system that allowed it to detect enemy aircraft at long ranges. This was an important feature as it allowed the Martin 262 to track and engage enemy aircraft before they could get close enough to attack the convoy. It had a fire control system that could track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. The Martin 262 was equipped with a sophisticated fire control system that allowed it to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. This was a major advantage in combat, as it allowed the Martin 262 to defend against multiple threats at the same time. It was canceled due to the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Despite its advanced design and capabilities, the Martin 262 program was canceled in 1955 due to the increasing effectiveness of air-to-air -air missiles and the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles. It had the potential to be used as a commercial aircraft. In addition to its military applications, the Martin 262 had the potential to be used as a commercial aircraft. Its long range and high speed made it a potential competitor to other long-range jets of the time such as the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. Overall, the Martin 262 was a fascinating and innovative aircraft that pushed the boundaries of aviation technology. So what happened to the prototypes of the Martin 262 after the program was canceled? And where can they be found today? After the Martin 262 program was canceled in 1955, the prototypes of the aircraft were likely either scrapped or sold for scrap. It is not uncommon for prototypes of military aircraft to be dismantled or sold off after their development programs are terminated. However, it is possible that some of the Martin 262 prototypes may have been preserved or saved by museums or private collectors. It is also possible that some components or parts of the Martin 262 may have been used in other aircraft or projects. If you are interested in seeing a Martin 262 convoy fighter jet in person, your best bet may be to visit a museum or aviation-themed attraction that has one on display. It is not uncommon for museums and other attractions to have prototypes or historic aircraft on display, and it is possible that a Martin 262 may be included in one of these collections. Alternatively, you may be able to find photographs or models of the Martin 262 online or in aviation-themed books or magazines. While it may not be possible to see the actual aircraft, these resources can still provide a good sense of what the Martin 262 looked like and how it was used. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time on Future City. Bye.